Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster, and today we're going on the attack and reviewing the Ibanez ATK-810. Let's check it out. This is my Ibanez ATK-810. I believe this is the top tier premium Ibanez ATK before getting into the Prestige series, which is made in Japan. Now unfortunately these aren't made anymore, I believe they were discontinued in 2017 or 2018. And this one was a new old stock 2017 model, but honestly, they're a great value if you can get them used or even new old stock, and they're still a pretty relevant base today. So I thought this one deserves a full review. The Ibanez ATK series first launched in the early 1990s, and it was a response to the success of the Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray. Now Ernie Ball's been really tough on counterfeiters and people making replica instruments. So Ibanez had to tread lightly to make sure it didn't impede on any of the Music Man trademarks. However, in the process, it developed a design aesthetic that lasted over 20 years. The ATK series has always featured the signature giant bridge plate. On top of that, most of them had featured this pickguard shape. You can't really see it because it's colored the same as the base. And the love it or hate it, headstock design. The ATK model lineup has come and gone, I want to say, three or four times over the past 20 years. And during that time, they've always left a mark. This model, the Ibanez ATK 810E, features an ash body with a natural finish, a maple pickguard, three-piece maple neck, and a maple fretboard. On top of that, unlike the lower ATK models and just like the Ibanez Prestige ATK, this has a jazz neck pickup. One of the other holdfasts of the ATK is this bridge pickup, which was meant to be a big middle finger to Ernie Ball Music Man. You guys got two coils? Well, we got three. That's right, this is a triple coil, though so actually I believe this might be a quad coil with a ghost coil in there. So it's effectively three coils. I don't know the specifics, I've heard a lot of different things, but either way, this is an awesome pickup. This has a little three-way selector, which allows you to choose between different coil configurations in the pickup. And this also has a three-band preamp. What's there not to like? People always labeled these as a stingray killer, but is that really the case? Well, let's find out. You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and hit that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. This thing sounds good. Between the two pickups, the three band preamp, and the three way toggle switch for the bridge pickup, this thing has a load of tones. And we're gonna go through all of them. But before we do, I gotta say that the build quality of this is really nice. This bass feels great in the lap. The neck is very smooth and feels good in the hand. And overall, I really have no complaints. So let's check out the neck pickup first. Here's the neck pickup with the preamp all the way down. Not bad. I mean, all the frequencies are cut, but that's a good starting point. Now, let's go ahead and turn up the bass 50%. There we go. And now this thing comes to life. And here's the bass control at 100%. That was
was a bit boomy. Now let's turn the bass back down and check out the mid control. Here's the mids at 50% with the neck pickup. Not bad. Now here's the mids all the way up. That was a little harsh but at least appreciate the legroom that you have with this preamp. I wouldn't really set any of these frequencies at 100%, but it's nice to have the option. Now, here's the treble control at 50% with the neck pickup. And now, here's the treble at 100%. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a very, very harsh. You get the idea. Now here's the neck pickup with the preamp at 50% all around. Not bad. I'm getting some P-Bass vibes from this, actually. You know what? Let's see what this sounds like compared to our P-Bass. It's kind of close. I mean, it's not a P pickup, but you get some nice fat tones out of it. Now let's check out this bridge pickup. We're going to check out this pickup with the switch in all three positions. First, here's position one with the preamp all the way down. Now here's the bass at 50%. And here's the bass at 100%. Okay, so this preamp is very powerful. For the rest of the review, I'm not going to do the 100% thing. We're going to go up to 50%, we'll listen to all the sounds, it'll be a good time. Now, here's the mids at 50%. Now here's the treble at 50%.
Nice. Now here's the preamp at 50% all across the board with the bridge pickup in position one. That's the one going this way. Very nice. Now here's the bridge pickup with the selector switch in position two in the middle. I believe this is what they called stingray mode. So here's the bridge pickup with the switch in position two and the preamp all the way down. Okay, now let's turn the bass up to 50%. I see why they call it Stingray Mode. This sounds really good. Now, here's the mid control at 50%. Now, here's the treble control at 50%. Not bad. Now, here's the preamp at 50% across the board. And just for fun, let's put this Stingray mode into my favorite Stingray configuration. The bass at 50% and just a little hint of treble and mid. Sounds almost like. Sounds almost like what? What did I say? You again. Yeah, me. Why don't you put me up against this same today? So you want me to compare you to this bass? Yeah. Why don't you? You won't. Okay. Per the request of my Stingray, we're going to go ahead and compare these basses with two different tone configurations. We're going to leave the preamp at 50% across the board for both of these, and then we're going to do my favorite tone configuration with just the bass boosted to 50% and a sprinkle of treble and mid. 
So here's the ATK in Stingray mode with everything at 50%. <laughs> Very nice. So now, here's both bases in my favorite config. Interesting. Well, let me know how close you think this sounded to the Stingray in the comments below. So here's the bridge pickup with the selector switch in position three and the preamp all the way down. Next, let's turn up the bass to 50%. Not bad. I really like the amount of meat that this preamp adds. Is nice. Now here's the mids at 50%. Now, here's the treble at 50%. Now here's the preamp at 50% across the board. Okay, so we have finally reached the point where we're checking out both pickups together. That's how many tones this thing has. So I'm not going to go through every single preamp configuration. I'm going to leave everything at 50% on the preamp, and we're going to check out the three different tones that we'll get with the bridge pickup, along with the neck pickup together. So first, here's both pickups together and the preamp at 50% with the switch in position one. <laughs> Now, here's
triggers the switch in position two. Very nice. And now here's the switch in position three. Not bad. Honestly, I prefer position two the best. Finally, how does she slap? I'd say she slaps pretty good. So here's my final thoughts on the Ibanez ATK 810. This thing is a tone machine. You can get a lot of different tones out of this and really spend all day fiddling with these electronics. The bass is also extremely comfortable to hold and the styling is love it or hate it, though I personally like it. One thing I don't like is the natural color pick guard, which kind of blends into the rest of the body and just doesn't really look great. A lot of the aesthetic gripes that I have with this thing are personal preference, and I do think some parts of this bass are kind of ugly, but overall, tone-wise, this thing is a beast. So what am I gonna rate? The Ibanez ATK 810. Ugh. I'm gonna rate this bass four claws out of five. The immense tone palette that this thing has is a pleasure to play around with. It's a comfortable bass, it's well built, and the styling, love it or hate it, is definitely polarizing and definitely memorable. People will be asking, what is this bass? I think this bass can get really close to the Stingray tone and also give you a lot of other tones to play around with. However, it is a huge bummer that they're discontinued, but I wouldn't put it past Ibanez to do another reissue in the future, given that they've done like, three of them or something like that. So the Ibanez ATK is a very interesting bass with an interesting legacy, and I hope that legacy continues into the future. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about my Ibanez ATK 810. And as always, until we groove again.